Right, good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of Off The Beaten Track. I'm staying some uh, pretty decent digs for the next three nights. I'm looking at Moray Golf Club. I'm not actually playing there this week, but we're on the Moray Firth and hopefully you watched last week's episode from a place called Buckpool. This morning I'm going to take a drive which is about 40 minutes away to a place called Duff House Royal. It's certainly another one off the beaten track, but I think you're gonna love it. But before I go any further, bacon's on the grill, time to get that coffee on the boil and uh, then we'll take a short drive. I'll see you on the golf course. in the car park and just walk to the first tee to have a little bit of a mooch around and what I can tell you is the first tee is right in front of the clubhouse so I'm taking this one serious I'm even having a few warm-up shots I don't think I've ever seen a uh, I was less nervous at St Andrews teeing off let's hope that forward can uh, do what it's been doing and that's just find the fairway. It might find a fairway, it's a really good strike, it might find the bunker, sit down. Oh, we've carried it. Okay, we're away and uh, we can calm down a bit now. I left 150 in on the second, but uh, just, I was only my breath on the tee shot, because just a few yards away, so I'm in turn out of bounds. But uh, first two holes really nice, and by the way, I bogeyed the first hole after what was a really decent tee shot. I almost hit, uh, ooh, part semi shank, we'll say, but we'll say it quietly. Anyway, let's see how we got on here. Flag right at the very back, and uh, it's not a huge fairway to hit, but like I said, I've just blindsided myself a tad. It's gonna stay, get down. Ah. Oh, it's coming round off the camber. More luck than judgment. That's not done too bad, you know. And so another round begins and my search to find golf courses off the beaten track. You can already see that Duff House Royal seems pretty special. I've probably mentioned already that this course is designed by uh, Dr. Alistair McKenzie and one of the features is obviously the size of his green complexes and just how much movement there is. I've just walked up what is a severe, a severe slope and if you don't find this right tier then you'll find yourself very much down that bottom half. Also noticeable is those big white sand filled uh, bunkers and some lovely uh, contouring in and around these greens. It's in immaculate condition. I'm a bit surprised again, to be honest with you, just how good this place is.
Well, we'll take a bit of a break. I think that uh, I'm, I'm already saying I love a bench on a golf course. I think when you want to worry is uh, when your name's on one, but right now, um, I just wanted a quick reminder about what this series is all about. It's very chilled, isn't it? It's like we're, you know, as Pat Ruddy said to me a few weeks ago at the European Club, we're, we're smelling the roses. We're just walking around these places. I'm trying to show you what they look like. We're trying to discover stuff that is off the beaten track and uh, even the music is generally just a whole chilled thing going on. So I hope you're enjoying it. I'm trying to enjoy my golf a bit more and I want to thank you massively for those people that comment and comment every week. I know you are, I see your names and trust me, it uh, doesn't go unnoticed. So uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Anyway, we'll have another minute or two while the screen clears and then we'll crack on. But this place is good, you know, really good again. We are finding stuff off the beaten track and uh, realistic golf for average golfers. So it's time for photo of the week. Over to you, Andy or Tracy in the comments down below. Come on. Oh, I can't hold anything today. I've also been in a lot of bunkers. I don't know whether anybody has recognised. And uh, it's different from course to course. I don't know whether anyone else finds this, but I just thought it was in there. The sand today is quite heavy. A lot of rain yesterday might be uh, a lot of the reason behind that. But all my bunker shots have come up short because I'm really struggling to get uh, a way of playing them. I don't know whether you've done it yourself. You play one course one day sand is light and fluffy you come back the next day it's quite heavy and compact and they're very different bunker shots and uh, whatever that is it eight holes in I still haven't learnt anything it's an absolute gorgeous day and it's nice to see a few azaleas on uh, Alistair McKenzie design isn't it I've left myself I've come up short here I've played a bloody forward and a hybrid and clearly lacking a little bit Come off that camber. Oh, it's grabbed. It's grabbed when you want it to release, but hopefully you can see from back there, or we might have some better footage of this green. And it's typical Mackenzie. It's just, uh, there's so much movement in it. Uh, it threw me a little bit, because it seems like I could have thrown that all the way, and it was fairly flat, because what I'm reading is uh, there's a camber off the left, but there you go. It plays with your mind. Right, hold 12, and it's, I think it could be the first par five we play today. But what's interesting is, certainly on this hole, and maybe on a few, the course would, uh, and it wouldn't demand, but if you could shape the ball on the odd couple off the tee, it would certainly help. And this is definitely one that seems to weave its way to, uh, from right to left. And the white tee box, which is just a few yards to the left, um, is even tighter on the tree line. Now, I've been hitting this forward really well. I'm going to see if I can just bring one a little bit from right to left. Well, it hasn't gone right to left. It's gone bullet straight. And I'm more than happy with that position. I didn't quite get it moving as I'd hoped. And uh, it's probably... Not turned out in a bad place that and we'll see where that leaves us is it going in as much to the left hand side as i actually think but well, what a lovely tee position Well, right, we talked earlier about the severity of the slopes um that shot i just played in which was a wedge that's the pitch mark and you've seen where i just put it up from so it's a couple of yards short of being half decent and in the end it's left the most ridiculous put and uh well as you can see I'm still away short, and now this is for par. Ah, it's a weak effort, and poor that is. You can sense by my tone, a little bit annoyed by that, but the hole itself was such a good golf hole. Weaves its way, sort of snakes through. I said you wanted to shape your ball, you need right to left off the tee, and then you need left to right, ideally, maybe at least anyway for a second shot, and then you've got to get onto this top tier when the pin is there otherwise well 
you do what I did. You're three foot. Oh, needs a bit more again just to get over that rise. It's so difficult. Like I keep on saying, repeating myself a bit, if you miss these greens in the wrong place. But also we've come back to what was, uh, I think that was the seventh green, possibly the sixth green actually. And it's a huge double green, which I love to see. I'm not sure why, but it's a great feature on the golf course. And I noticed them uh, early on as well. I think one and possibly 17 is also a double green. So, uh, but either way, if you look back at six, the pin on six, if you come long, just look at the way that kind of rises and falls. It's incredibly good, you know. Duff House Royal Golf Club. The only Royal Golf Club where the Royal title is used as a suffix and not a prefix. I can't help but think the golf course would have a very different perception if it was known as Royal Duff House. Green fees at Duff House range from £20 to £70, which I can assure you is incredible value for this standard of golf course. Right, it's not all about the golf when you visit this Speyside area. It's uh, also commonly associated with whiskey. So we're about to go on a whiskey tour. This is Strathyla Distillery, the home of Shivas Regal, Royal Salute and the Strathyla Malt. Tucked away in the town of Keith, the age-old traditions of making whiskey are kept alive in buildings that could tell a thousand tales. I'm always amazed to hear the very simple but effective method that produces the finest malts. The accompanying sounds and smells will have you fully immersed in the process. Our guide held the key to the finest barrel Strathyla produced. And we even got to taste something very special indeed. If you want golf and whiskey, the Murray Speyside region is the place to be. After all, it is known as the whiskey capital of the world. See you next week.